Hi, this is Andrew with Uvify, and today we're going to be going over the binding and channel setup of the Draco. For this, we're going to remove the battery from the Draco itself. This is done by pushing the button on the top and sliding the battery backwards. Once we've got the battery out, we can lay it aside for now. On the Draco, there is the bind button at the back here. This is done by simply pressing the button for initial binding. We won't do that right now, but first we need the USB cable that was included. This is a micro USB cable to standard USB. On the top of the Draco here, once you've taken the battery out, there is a bind button. It says bind button there, and basically you push this when we go through the bind process. In addition, on the back is the USB port required for binding. This has a little dust cover on it, and you have to pull this out to get to that USB port. You take the USB plug, and then you'll plug it into that port there. Once that's plugged in, we now can plug this into either power from a laptop, from a phone, or a power bank. You don't need data connection for this initial binding setup, you just need power to the USB port. So you'll take your transmitter, similar to this one, we'll be going over the DSMX binding at this, uh, in this video. For this, you need to have your DSMX radio set up with the model memory you want. So for this, we'll turn on our DSMX radio and wait for it to start up. Once the radio is turned on, you'll create a new model for this unit. Once the model is set up, standard model for multi-rotors, we'll be able to turn the radio back off and then plug in our USB port power while holding the bind button. So make sure you push down on that bind button before plugging this in. I'm gonna be using a laptop power for this one and simply plug it in. When you plug it in, the lights on the black will start flashing colors, and basically you'll be getting that yellow uh, blinking light there, meaning that the radio is ready to bind. For my DSMX radio, I have the radio powered off. I hold down the bind button and then power the radio on. Sometimes you have to be a bit farther away than right up next to the unit for it to bind properly. If you get a failed bind on the DSMX radio, simply try with it maybe a bit farther behind or behind you like this. Once the radio is bound to the unit, you'll see there that the yellow light has stopped flashing. You now see that the Draco is bound to the radio uh, for a connection of all the channels and all the settings. You will see a, a small blue light here as well. Now that the connection is complete, we can look at plugging in the battery. This is to do a quick channel check and see that all these settings are correct. Out of the box, the Draco is set up for DSMX connection for the DSMX unit. This means that all your channels and switches should be preset. If you do need to change any of these, we'll be looking at this later. So, we can now power on the Draco. We do again the short long press on the battery, short and long, and the Draco will boot up. Now, because the Draco is connected to the transmitter, there will not be any beeps like we were mentioning in the initial unboxing video. At any point, if you turn your radio off and or the Draco re loses reception, the Draco itself will start beeping like so. So if you're having issues with this type of beeping, it means that you're not bound correctly. So we will turn my radio back on and get connection back to the Draco. So once it is rebound, the beeping will stop. Now we're looking to see if all of the arming... Uh, uh, so we're now looking to see how the uh, Draco will arm and disarm. For this, the Draco is set up for stick arming. So some people will have uh, switch arming, which is slightly different, but out of the box, the stick arming is what is used. For this, we're going to go yaw stick down into the right to arm, and yaw stick down into the left to disarm. So we'll try arming the Draco now. As you can see, the motors are spinning and everything is correct. To disarm, we go down and to the left. So if this doesn't initially arm on you, there are a couple things that you can check to make sure that you are ready to go. One of these things is the rates on the transmitter itself. Some throws on the DSMX transmitters are not high enough for the Draco to see. So to do this, you need to either go into throws or rates within the transmitter and change it to either 125% or 150 units. 
For my DX9 radio here, I have to go to 150 points instead of the stock 100 points. So once that setting is OK, you should be able to arm your Draco like so. Once you have that set up like so, we can connect to the app on the computer to change any of the other settings. So we'll go over to our computer now and change these settings. Before you plug Draco in, you'll see here that there is no COM ports available. However, once you do plug Draco in, the COM port will become available if you have the drivers installed. If you have any problems with the drivers, please head over to uofi.com and you can find the drivers there. Once Draco is plugged in and working, as you can see here, I have COM3 available. This COM port will be different depending on how many other things you've plugged in or other various variables within the system. But basically, once you have a COM port available here, you can click Connect. If you have any troubles connecting to that one, you can also click down the drop-down menu and select another COM port if you have something else plugged in as well. So we're going to click Connect now, and we'll start in the status screen. So this is the one that will show up when you initially connect Draco. And basically gives you a readout of all the things that's happening on Draco at the moment. For example, if I move Draco around, you can see me there moving the quad around. When it's sitting on the ground level like this, uh, there can be a little bit of drift in this direction. This is the yaw direction, or heading, as you can see up in the top left corner. This is normal. Any drift in these axes, forward, back, left, and right, is not normal. So please just make sure that when you plug your Draco in, that it kind of sits here like this, with maybe a little bit of drift. Next, we can look at all the settings on the side. Most of these are not very important to look at unless you're troubleshooting. Um, the most important one to pay attention to is the firmware version. Make sure that you're up to date with the current firmware available. Once we're done with looking at the status of Draco, we can also head over to the configuration. In the configuration tab, we can look at what we're looking to look at really here is the channel mapping and our ranges. So on the right side here is our channel mapping and ranges. So for example, if I move the throttle stick on my radio, which is also currently on, you can see that the throttle stick moves up and down, the yaw stick moves left and right, and the other sticks are moving normally as well. As mentioned, you might have to extend your ranges to about 150 points if you're on Spectrum, for example. And I've done this on my radio now, and that's why I'm getting the ranges that I'm currently getting. For example, throttle is about 999. You want the bottom end of all these to be about 1,000. So if I move all my sticks, you can see they're all at 999. And if I move them all to max, you can see they all go to about 2,000. These are kind of the ranges you want to have. As long as you're under 1,100 on the bottom end or above 1,900 on the top end, you're OK. If you're not with outside of these ranges, for example, if I move my throttle up to about 1,120, Draco will not arm with these ranges like that. So please make sure that your ranges go to about 1,000 to 2,000 within this configurator. There are many settings within radios where you can actually extend these, so just go into your radios manual if you need to know how to extend ranges. The other thing you can set up is an aux switch, like right here that I have set up. This is what I use for arming. You can also have stick arming by having the yaw stick head to the left or to the right. If you're wondering if your Draco is arming or not, this is with battery unplugged. You can also check this little exclamation mark right here. It says motor arming. If, for example, I have my throttle stick too high and I try arm right now, you'll see that this does not light up. However, if we go down to the bottom and arm it, you can see that now this lights up. And I'll disarm. So that's the channel mapping and ranges. So please make sure you have these set. These are probably the easiest thing to have incorrect when you initially set up Draco. Next is the video mode. Uh, this you don't usually have to touch unless you are switching between the analog or HD version of Draco. This uh, sets up the OSD, but you don't usually have to touch this. In addition, we have PIDs and rates. So these basically set how fast the Draco will move when you move the sticks. We have several profiles available to you. So if you want to look at, for example, the basic, this switches some of the rates and expo values so that they're nice and soft and slow. If, for example, you want to go a bit more fast or you want to do some flips and stuff like that, you can go with some higher rates, such as intermediate. Once you get to expert, it's basically all open to what you want to set. So this takes a bit of understanding. So please only go into expert mode once you have a good understanding about how to set PIDs and rates. Also within this tab is the black box. 
as you can see here. This is if you need to troubleshoot anything on Draco. It records basically all the sensors on board, all the data that uh, is available during flight. In addition, you can have an SD card in the Draco to record this data. There's a certain amount of onboard flash that you can use, or if you want to record for a while, you have to insert an SD card for that. If you change any of these settings within here, you have to go down to the bottom right here and click Save and Reboot. This will save any of the settings. If you don't save the settings, they'll reset to their defaults that they were before you changed them. So we'll click Save and Reboot now. And basically, the Draco will power cycle and then come back once you click Connect. Once you're reconnected, you can hit Body LED and we'll look at setting up the LEDs on the front and the back of the Draco. You click on the little LED here to change the, the settings for this. And right now, basically, there's two main settings that you want to change. And that is the color of the LEDs when they're armed or disarmed. To do this, just click on the disarmed button and click the color that you want to have. For example, if I want cyan for disarmed. And then for armed, I want to have green. I can click green there and then save those settings. Some other settings here that you can change, but you can just play with these. Many of these uh, are not required uh, for flying. And last but not least, we'll head over to ARM LED. For changing any of the ARM LEDs, you do need to have a battery plugged in. Please also make sure, though, that you do have your props off when doing any of the ARM LED configuration. So we'll click on the ARM LED configuration now. You will get ESCs connecting. Mine has failed right now as I do not have a battery plugged in, but basically you can come into here and change any of these. There are three colors per arm. And this gives you a total possibility of nine colors. So you can click, for example, if I want to turn on red on the back arms, one and three, I can click red and turn them on and then save. If you turn them all off, uh, all the LEDs will be off. If you turn them all on, you get white, for example, or, and you can set each one individually. Once you have done this, you can click Save and then head back to any of the other tabs. And so that is the UFI Draco configurator. Okay, so now that we are done with the app, we will be looking to make sure that everything is good here again. And once again, we're going to check with the down and right for the arm and down and left for the yaw to disarm. Basically, now you are ready to fly the Draco. So we can unplug the USB port like so. Please make sure to replace the dust cover on the little plug at the back. In addition, we can power the drone down now, so short and long press. And we can turn off our transmitter. So that completes the video for setting up the bind and channel setup for Draco. Please head over to uvify.com for more information.